everyone, and welcome to episode 69 of Beyond Retro. I'm Joe Amato, and I'm here with Nasty Nate, Nathan Kennedy. And what's going on, Nathan, besides you throwing me off without not knowing I was live or what the hell was going on there? That's good. I like that. Uh, you know, just uh, being annoyed by everything, apparently. <laughs> it, it, in case you're wondering, it was, you know, his dogs went a little uh, nuts just before we started. Got him a little bit piffed, but he's good now. I think you're good. You're all right. If they, I don't think they're going to park no more. Well, if they do, it won't be it won't be fun. That's all right. So, all right. Well, we we have Delta seventy eight that's uh, joining us in the chat room. We have some more people watching us live, and if you guys want to jump in and say something, you go ahead. But uh, we're going to be discussing a fan movie now. Th- here's the thing: back before the internet, I hate always saying this because you know I'm not trying to sound like I'm a hundred years old or something. But back before the internet. And back before you could see stuff online, I remember going to a convention, and that's uh, it was uh, at a sports arena. And they were selling, like, video games, tapes, all this stuff. And that's where I got the uncut producer's version of Halloween 6 where, my God, it was real blurry. But, hell, I felt like I had a piece of gold there. But along with that, there was some Friday the 13th fan films. And it was eight of them on two tapes. And I remember, I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. And I remember going home, watching them, and... They were all terrible. And, hey, I'll be honest, it'd probably be the same way if I did it because it actually looked like just people were walking around with a camcorder or a cheap kind of – well, they didn't have these back in the day. But, you know, I mean, something real cheap, and they're sitting there just viewing themselves and back and forth, and one guy screaming in the mirror when he's looking at his mask as Jason. It's just all sorts of insanity. Now, don't get me wrong. It's fun what they did, but for me, I was expecting movies. I didn't understand these are just people with a camera like you and I. So – I'm not faulting it saying, oh, they're horrible and wretched, you know, movies in general. Just for what I was expecting, I was expecting something amazing. And I just got kids and people running around with a camera. So here comes the Internet. Here comes this day and age. And, of course, I missed out on the Kickstarter for this Never Hike Alone. I wish I would have backed it because this is, just, as you're going to see for you guys who have never seen it, it's just an amazing damn movie. I'm sorry I mean to ramble. It's, it's just so goddamn good. I was like, this felt like it could have been in the theater. I didn't realize fans could do something at this level. But go ahead, Nathan. I didn't mean to do that long rant, but this is a this is going to be a good-ass thing we're going to do commentary. No, I, I'm trying to remember. Like, Did you know about this before I, I sent it to you? Had you already seen it? Or did I? I, no, I can't I mean, remember. I made a post. I made a post about this, I, I think it was last year. I can't remember what time last year, and I can't remember how I found out about it. But it was after, obviously, the Kickstarter thing. There was this big thing about See Never Hike Alone debut on YouTube. And it was a big event. It might have been in the Friday the 13th groups that I'm a part of. So they were hyping the hell out of this thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit and watch this live. And I sat there wondering, oh, what are we going to get? And from the beginning to the end, I was like, damn, that was good. I still can't believe fans did this. You know, as it goes, like, you know, for anybody that's going to be listening to us and watching it, you know, whether you've seen it before, at least you'll understand the gist of what we're saying. But if you're new to this and you're hearing us first, then you watch it. It's an experience. It's something different from the music to the acting to everything, the way this the cameras are used. It doesn't feel like anything cheap at all. This actually felt like a actual Hollywood quality type of production, which was very surprising to me. And it also, uh, we're, we're straying away from that element of counselors being killed at a camp. It's just, yeah. uh, it's an entirely uh, fresh take, but also very familiar. And as Joe said, it, it does have very good production values. I was pleasantly surprised by this because uh, most fan films... Uh, you can kind of tell now there are some exceptions and there, there are some really excellent fan films out there. I remember, uh, uh, what is it? Batman dead end, which was really cool. How that one ended. If you guys have not seen that yet, uh, I don't know if it's on YouTube or if you'll have to dig a little deeper, but just, uh, give that a search. And, and then of course, uh, star Wars is, I think probably has the most set of fan films and I've watched a couple of those and some of those are okay, but the other ones are just kind of whatever, but this uh, kind of uh, uh, separates itself from the pack. Uh, The production value uh, is just quality and it's not, uh, it's not too uh, cheesy or anything. There's a nice surprise thrown in for us and uh, yeah, yeah. 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 We'll hold that off. Definitely. (laughs) 
<laughs> and uh, we we hope that you guys that are checking us out here on YouTube uh, watch along with us. The link for it is down below. So go ahead and give that a click. Have that set to the side. That way, when we we get going, you can you can watch along with us. Yes, and Yanish has just joined us too. So Yo. thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's if you guys have never seen it, you're gonna love it. But if this is your first experiences with us doing the commentary with it, enjoy it. But when we're done, and if you've never seen it, watch this. Do yourself some, you know, a service. Just it's, it's worth it, and it's and it's it's long. You know, it's like over fifty minutes, I believe. So it's not like a quick fan film. You yeah, know, we it's, got it's pretty yeah. damn long. Fifty three forty one. So it's a, a decent length, but also not too long. Excuse me, I don't know if that burp came through there, but uh, it's <laughs> that, that. Well, that's the other problem with some fan films is it takes its material and just tries to extend it out way longer than it ever needed to be. And I feel like this is a, a good solid like run time for this. I exactly. think that, and as had it gone any longer, it may, it may have been too much. You know, I'm not quite sure, but what they did, it worked perfect, which we'll start talking about as it's going. But yes, it, it never felt dragged on. You'd think it would feel like it was a dragged on movie at points, but how they built it up. But shit, I just almost want to get to it. If you want to right, yeah, tell yeah. everybody where it's at, what to click. It's I love this. Damn movie. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, check out the description. It's uh, right beside a watch with us. Give that a click and uh, have it loaded. Joe, I uh, you want me to go ahead and give the countdown? Yes, you could do it. All right. If you if everyone at home is ready in three, two, one, play. And of course, we get the disclaimer here at the the beginning. I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, they're just basically saying this was created out of love and appreciation for the Friday the 13th franchise. So, which and this is what I like. This is this is a perfect example of how we always say sometimes when people get involved with the movie and they're doing something like you know a beloved franchise, whether it's something from comics or horror, and it feels like God, did these guys ever watch a horror movie or did they ever watch a Marvel or a DC or anything? these guys did. I mean, this, you can definitely tell it was made by fans. And what's funny is I said it before I even looked at their end. It's made by fans for fans. This is what we need more of is fans that are super passionate, know these properties to somehow get involved with doing movies, not just random people just because, Hey, that's a big A list director or writer in Hollywood. Doesn't mean they know the damn movie. Get some fans sure. involved like this. Cause this works. God damn. Go ahead. I, I like that right there in the AK. I didn't mean to interrupt, but the K right there. I like seeing that Jason in that silhouette, you know? Yeah. Did, you ever, did you notice that? Yeah, I yeah. thought that was kind of cool. Go ahead. But are, are already, you know, we're, you're getting like a good wide aerial shot. Like this This looks professionally made, you know? And I, I like that we're kind of in an era now where uh, we we ourselves that aren't in the business are capable of at least acquiring the equipment and doing cool cool shit like this that uh shows off their abilities and what they can do so uh and isn't it crazy that something as simple as watching a car drive and i know it sounds nuts right when i seen that at the beginning i was like this might be good because I, again i'm going back to the fan films that i seen that i was expecting to see from this to where it's just basically somebody holding a camera in a car and it's all just you know what i mean a horrible quality nothing like real actual equipment to do it i was like this might be interesting. So, yeah, and I, I haven't had any follow up to see if the director of this fan film has started to uh, work on other projects or if anything had been offered to him for this. Because I hope uh, on, yeah. I, I, it, would, it would be cool to see uh, this evolve and see this this person move on to uh, greater things. No, and it's true because I was I'm waiting too. I was like, man, I'd love to see a sequel because just to let everybody know, I think that they're gonna be doing a uh they had this, you know, like I said, it was a Kickstarter thing, so people got their I think DVDs or Blu-rays, however it works, but it had such a uh, a demand of people wanting to see this on Blu-ray or acquire a copy that I believe if you give if you go to the Never Hike Alone Facebook page, they're gonna give you information this month, I believe, of a second run of Blu-rays and how you can acquire them. Because again, this wasn't something they made for money. I mean, this all went to, I think, to charities. I think that it went to something to um, like the parks and recreation or somewhere around there to where money was donated there. But all the money that was made basically went into making this movie. So it's not like they profited from it. It was just, 
it's like a love letter to the Friday the Thirteenth fans. Yeah. Now I admit, real quick, this part where they showed this recording, showing it from him, that was the only part in the movie I was concerned. I was like, oh no, please don't let it be just a movie where it's always from his recording view, and I feel like I'm in the Blair Witch. And then when they showed these other angles, I was like, okay, yeah. good, I get it. Yeah, no, We're no, no. I, back I, and forth. I had the the same reservations, but I I, I like the fact that. It's basically he has his own like blog, YouTube channel. So he he has these videos where he's like, "Oh, we're gonna go hike wherever today." Yeah, and I'm sure most of you can see where this is going. Uh, he's basically gonna go for a hike and run into Jason Voorhees. But it's it's very very well done. But Joe, I did have the same reservations. As soon as you see this, you're like, "Ah, shit! Is this just going to be like all like found footage?" Mm-hmm. But no, yeah. Once we get these other angles, I'm like, "Okay, it's it's going to be a nice blend." And uh, yes, it, it's going to yeah, lend itself blend. later on in the film. I can't get my audio balance right on this video. There we go. Okay, I'm trying no, to get it in a good is, spot where I can like hear it, but not enough to where it's going to like overlap you at all. <laughs> No, I got you. Yeah, because the thing is, I was like, I'm just going by mental memory now because I was thinking, should I got another set of headset where I hooked one into the computer and put <laughs> one ear here and one ear there? But no, I like this. He's doing his little, uh, you know, hiking. He's doing his parkour stuff. He's got his time limit of how he, you know, expects where to get. And before, of course, it gets too dark. But no, it is a perfect mix of this, like you said, the, you know, first person camera view and then actually just us experiencing like we're viewing him and it was a good balance it didn't feel like there was too much of one or another you know it's like i said i like the balance i like the mix but as you can hear when you start when the movie starts going very good music as well i can't remember the person who did the music in this or the amount of people but it felt professionally done again it didn't feel like they were just grabbed and again i don't think they just grabbed music from other movies they created i think original music yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah, this. yeah it was there in the the uh the opening credits Oh, oh, damn! It shows me I wasn't even. Yeah, looking at yeah, that. we should. I guess we should have been paying more attention to the uh, <laughs> the credits. I do know though that the the writer and director of this film, which I I'm sorry if I butcher his name, but it looks like uh, Vincent Desanti. He does have an E at the end of Vincent, so I don't know if it's like adds to the vernacular of it, but I'll just leave it at that. But he plays plays Jason. Yeah, yeah, he plays Jason in this, which is it's kind of cool. It must be a very tall dude. Yeah, it looks like he's a big dude with, you know, Dasani. Like, hey, how you doing? I figure he's Italian like me. So, hey, he's good people. You know, anytime you get some Italians doing some work out there. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. No, but it is good. I was like, hey, there's an Italian. I love it. They're always involved somehow with Friday the 13th, whether it's music or doing something else. But, damn it. You're right. Yeah, he's the one that did this and also plays the role of Jason Voorhees. And I think it's Kyle McLeod. Or I I hope it was McLeod because I know sometimes when people spell the M-C-L-E-O-D, it's pronounced different. But I think he's he's the one that plays Andrew, the main uh, protagonist. And here's Joe kind of reading his cue cards, going over like how he's going to do the intro for the podcast. Is it, yeah, could you imagine me doing something like that? Because, but and I like I that it's kind of. It's, see, that's the thing. I've never looked at cue cards, so I liked how he did this. Because, like, you know, he was, oh, I got to get this right, and then you know, he's trying to promote this this tool that he has here that's kind of like shit to him, but. I like that because I even what's funny is I thought about other podcasts. I was like, I wonder, do they do that? <laughs> you know, do they do that? Do they like look at cue cards before yeah. they start it off? And like, oh, yeah. damn, you know, that's why some of our intros are terrible. Kind of like this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, you caught me off guard. Damn it. I didn't know we were live and you caught me. <laughs> and, and, and this is another thing I like. That, you know, you're starting to hear the creepy sounds out in the forest and you're hearing all these woods. He's assuming there's like about six to eight of them in a pack. It eventually, when you start hearing like scuffling and almost growling, then it goes away. It's like, oh, I think I know what's going on here, which you hope it lends itself to maybe, will we see something about this later? But I like that because we know who it is. He don't, but we know that Jason just probably killed all eight of them wolves. <laughs> which I, that would have been uh, kind of cool to have seen in a way, in a way. <laughs> In a way, yeah, because I think it lends itself better almost sometimes just to, you know, using your, you know, Oh, no, I know. Okay. Le- less is more for sure, but I'm just saying, like, the, the visual in my mind of Jason fighting off, like, a, a pack of coyotes. <laughs> yeah, or coyotes, yeah, that's it, and just killing them all. It's like, yeah. I always like the, you got to have the, the tent scene. You always got to have something like that, you know, to get the feels of all the other Friday 13th movies, some of the 
the good scenes that we remember from the tents, especially the one from coming from part seven when she gets pulled out and she gets slammed on a tree. But you can always have the yellow tent. I didn't know. Now, can people just use that in nature? Just use plain old water? Just uh, like I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I'd be somebody that would suck in nature. Like I said, I'm a city boy, so if I was out in nature, I was like, man, I don't know about which water to drink or not drink or what to boil. And what I, uh, I was, Well, I mean, if you, if you were to take that water and if it was, I, I would say if that water was clear and you boiled it, then you'd be fine, but I wouldn't just straight up drink it. No. I, I've only been camping uh, two or three times in my life. It's not something that I particularly enjoy just because like if, if we went out and it was cooler and I didn't have to worry about mosquitoes and stuff, then that would be cool. But in the summertime, nah, I'm good. No. Okay. I'd rather camp yeah. when like everything is not around. There's no, not too many animals, not as many insects. Wouldn't have to worry you about spiders as much. That two e o three or that little marker. Do, do you understand what that meant? I was I was kind of confused with markers in this. I I know the ones later that they talk about, but that was that. I uh, didn't get I, that. that in particular, no. Um, okay. At first, I was trying to relate it to anybody Friday the Thirteenth. You know, wise. I was like, I no, I think any it's movie. You know, no, it's usually like. Uh, and not most do it, but there are some trails and places that do have markers to make it easier to navigate, especially where he's got his map. Yeah. It would it would be easier to pinpoint. I imagine that it would maybe be like a, a coordinate. I don't know. Maybe we're just sounding really dumb right now. But Oh, I know I am. I'll admit that. But uh, either way, yeah, and here we go. The, no trespassing because we know what's beyond that. And what was it? How was it explained about they made sure they bought it off or made sure to where nobody would go there, that it belonged to some nature preserve or yeah. how was that described? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You pretty much, uh, pretty much nailed it right there. And, and this is just That's a like, cool visual. I like, yes. The camera's on it. him. He's looking off to the side and boom, we got our, our first glimpses of uh, Jason mm -hmm. and then he and turns back. Gone. Of course he's gone. You gotta have that. That's what makes it perfect. And I like that kind of like when they would show that camera, like as if it's through the perspective of Jason of how it had slight little shakiness. It, it, this was kind of weird, like to catch you off guard. I was like, well, what the hell happened? Because I thought, was he really supposed to be there? Or is it just for us, the effect of Jason, for him, just the effect of what the hell was that noise? You know, I, I guess that was like the feel they were kind of given to you, I think. Um,. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go with uh, Jason has his teleportation powers. In this, <laughs> don't, remember, which has never it, bothered me eight, at all. Yeah, only part eight remembers the one where he did that insanity. It didn't happen in every movie, contrary to what people think. Well, you know, part, said, part oh, eight's awesome. So, uh, I know eight is good, but I know that's the one that then everybody started thinking, well, man, they can run 100 miles an hour. Jason's straight in front of him. I was like, actually, it was only part eight. Didn't happen in the others. Well, he never runs. I was like, he ran in two, three, four. I was like, and he ran in some later. So Jason has ran. So, to, in which, yes, we're going to see in this too, which I like. Oh, there we go. I got some Jason. But I do, I like that. You're going to see that later too. We're going to we're gonna get Jason that runs. And I, there's good combinations of the feels, I think, of a few movies, as you know, and everybody else will find out later of what they were. I think trying to do with their version of Jason. I'm kind of surprised that there, there haven't been more, or maybe I just haven't seek them out, but more fan films involving, uh, uh, all of these characters, you know, your Jason Voorhees, your Freddy Krueger's Michael Myers. Um, Freddy's one that would always be tough because, you know, it's yeah, just like, you know, with the new movie that, can, yeah, you know, that's yeah. a distinct face of Robert England. So anytime right. that happens, like ugh, Halloween's, eh, <laughs> those can be done. But putting on a mask, that doesn't mean, bam, you instantly can be Jason right. or Michael. You yeah. got to understand those mannerisms. And the, like you said, he, he did a great job in this of doing mannerisms in the character of Jason. You can tell the guy has watched all the movies because it's a good combination of a few of them. Definitely. Yeah, would, you know, you, would, you would, would, oh, go would you go camping? No, no, never. I, I'm just not, uh, no, I'm just not a, a camper person. That, that ain't my thing. So no, I just, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be going camping. I, I, I just feel so out of my element. I mean, years ago we went to Houghton Lake, Michigan, where it was a camping area. It was, it was kind of okay, but eh, it's just never been my thing. And especially if I was be by myself, I wouldn't know where the hell to go and what to do. And yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I give it to people that know how to do the survival stuff because I admittedly can't. I'd never be one of those hacks or them people that say, man, they could do that and they could easily survive out there. I wouldn't know shit. Yeah. I'd have to take so much food with me and, and lighters and things to make sure there's flames. I wouldn't be able to make fire with sticks and oh, I'd be dead. <laughs> Well, I, the, Joe, most people don't like go camping and do the survival thing. Most of them go with lighters and things like they they just go to Hell, have, I don't know. have a good time. I mean, yeah. you know, if if Emily's like, let's uh let's get a tent and and go to because we got quite a few um lakes uh, like and state parks and things that you can go and camp at. If she wanted to go oh, do okay. that, I'm like, you know, let's make a fire and take some beers and get drunk and. Yeah, give nature. it a shot. Yep. Yeah, give it a shot. At least when he was carrying the wood, he did get punched through the back and, you know, like in the other Friday the 13th. Ah, there we here go. we go. The iconic sign. Camp Crystal Lake. He didn't expect this. He thought he was just going to be going hiking and he didn't know where he was going to be running into. And this brought a little excitement. Sit there to tell all his uh, bloggers of what the hell has just happened. Yeah, if, if I knew of the stories and I knew that, that's when I would have turned around, but. That's, that's just me. That's why, like I said, I didn't go to camp as a kid. thought Jason was going to be there. Isn't that terrible? The shit that gets into your head. I love the movies. No. But I never wanted to be out in the woods. I, I honestly, oh. I, I would I would love to go out in the woods and Jason Voorhees be out there. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I guess so <laughs> for some people. Yeah, I like, you know, again, I just like when they would have some of the atm- atmospheric music. Like I said, they, they do it perfect. Just and, and to have these cabins, everything. I don't even know if this is stuff that was there for a long time, how much had to be built. I, I didn't know the behind the scenes stuff of what was here. Oh, of course, the stuff inside that they have, how they, you know, dress up the inside of the cabins and things. I know that yeah, stuff. They I, do, I, I also know nothing about the behind the scenes of this. It's just uh, I watched this a few months ago and. Uh, you and I had talked about doing a commentary for this, but we just sort of wanted to share it with uh, our fan base. And uh, yeah, yeah, we just we we want you guys to watch this as well, especially if you're you're fans of the franchise, because it, yeah, it, I mean, the the franchise it, now has been dormant for uh, ten years. Ten, yeah, and, since and 2009. Now, it's like Jesus. Yeah, and now with the the rights issues and everything, who who's to say when we'll get another movie? Right, so this is – you do feel like you're getting something. Like I said, it, it definitely didn't feel cheap. But the, I've never been one for the behind-the-scenes stuff like I told you. I just – I've never done that, and sometimes I do. Unlike you and Tyler, who usually know all that behind-the-scenes stuff, I usually just – I don't know. I kind of like experiencing just knowing this and then maybe sometimes seeing the behind-the-scenes stuff. I don't know if it takes me out of it, maybe knowing it. I mean, I, mean, I can understand watching it after, but I don't know if there's some people that even – see like the makings of stuff before like the movie happens like they might have like shots oh, of this I, shots of that I've never done that I, oh, okay. because I, I feel like if you do that and then go into the movie it does sort of ruin it but I after the fact on some things I do and then you know I enjoy uh, commentary tracks and I also enjoy a nice playboy every now and again who doesn't god damn well you felt like you hit the jackpot when you were a kid if you found one of those oh man I remember walking home from school and I found some pages just laying by a fence by a park I was like oh yeah, this is, um, take this home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, damn, look at that. No, you do. You get excited. And then when you're and done like, you were done with that, you went to the coupon king and you 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 <laughs> sort of like bartered that for something else. Right. Yeah. It's see when he was doing that and he was looking at you seeing, you know, behind him, you know, I'm sitting there staring at the windows of the door yeah. waiting to see if I can yeah, see. Yeah, you're you. conditioned that, to think that way and nothing happens. And this is what I mean about this movie is all these little things that get you antsy and anticipating and kind of like holding your breath because you don't know what the hell is going on half the time that's why i said this movie doesn't drag like you would have thought it would with not seeing jason yeah. just because it having you like you know on the edge of your seat wonder what's happening it, it's perfect and when they start playing in some of the music it just it is it's suspenseful and it just works beautifully that's what's just it's hard. I mean, think of that. How hard is it to carry a movie almost halfway with not having the main character you think you're waiting for? Because yeah. I don't, I don't think I would have wanted Jason almost right from the beginning. It's like ew, it would have been anticlimactic to have it that early. It's like let it, you know, wait, you know, see how much you can pull and stretch this out, which they did perfectly. Yeah, it's it's good to uh, let it breathe and evolve in a in a natural way. Yeah, and I, that's what makes this. Uh, 
it goes back to the production value. It, it, it took a lot of care and attention to it. Um, you know, I, I I, I say it'd be cool to go out into the woods and see Jason Voorhees, but I would not like go into an abandoned cabin like this. I it's just uh no. No thank you yeah, to that. Yeah. And, and and again, along with the music and the sound effects, you know it's just one person you're basically seeing the whole movie until Jason comes and some stuff towards the end, but it's a good actor. You know, we've seen yeah. not only movies in Hollywood, some, you know, very piss poor actors and, of course, even fan films where it's just you can tell their acting's weird. This guy does a great job of acting. Like I said, this Kyle is a good actor for this movie, especially when it's hard doing it when you're just basically, you know, talking to yourself or talking to a camera. But he does a great job. I'm going to pull up the IMDb so we can we can get some names going. Uh Drew, it's L E I G H T Y. Oh, I, was, I sat there. Oh, I was. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's uh, what, what the hell was I saying? I I completely butchered no, it. No, no. His name it... his name is Kyle in this, but I'm just. Oh, I, I God, I got so lost. Okay, okay. I <laughs> thought his real name was Kyle, and he was playing Drew. So his Jesus. No, 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 no. no, no. I, his his name is Kyle. Okay, so yeah, Drew Leite, Leite. Yeah, I'm sorry yeah. about that, Drew. If we butchered the last name, and I'm sorry <laughs> right. I butchered the names backwards because I, I didn't remember really hearing his name too clearly in this. So I, I remember just seeing both names at one time, and I was trying to remember which was which. So, well, thanks for that, Nathan. And sorry about that, Drew. Like, like, damn, these guys are commentating. And they screwed my name up. That's my, and I didn't know what this was at first when I kept seeing these these things these numbers hanging i didn't understand what that was and i'm glad they explained it later because i again i felt like i was lost of not knowing something on friday the 13th i was like did they have all these numbers somewhere before i felt there was a combination i missed and when he explains it later i was like oh good now i don't feel like such a moron because i do sometimes as i did just a couple minutes ago damn name butchering <laughs> i do enjoy the fact that uh he, he's just decided to camp out right here and now he's going to kind of give us the story. Yep, the whole story about Jason. Oh, and I also feel bad because we sat there and as I was rambling through the thing, you missed the coyote head that was in the, yeah. the flu or the shoot. And yeah. then he just threw it out. So, yeah, uh, you can tell that's a little bit of a victim of Jason then. Maybe Jason did put that there for fun. I don't know. Maybe he knew this guy was going to do that, possibly. But, yes, I like the – yeah, he's telling the stories of – of Jason, and then his brother, I believe, telling him the, uh, the story of Jason. Yeah, he was telling the story of yeah, Jason yeah. growing up and talking about the mother. And yeah, can you imagine finding out that stuff was true? <laughs> yeah, and he just said uh, the story you scared the shit out of him. So uh, thanks to his older brother. And that's how it usually happens. Sometimes your older brothers put so much, you know, stuff in your head that it starts freaking you out. That's why I wouldn't go in the basement when I was a kid. I was convinced there was some kind of monster down there, so I'd never go down there by myself. Had to be with somebody, and the every light had to be on in the basement. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this place is abandoned. No one gets to see it, all because of some stupid ghost story. Yep. And, you know, that's something you'd probably actually think, especially if you think, yeah, this there is no real Jason Voorhees. And you look at this, you know, camp that looked like it was probably at one time very vibrant and full of life and kids and stuff going on. And you think that there was some goofy ghost story that ruined the whole legacy of this place. And they closed it down so people can't appreciate and see, you know, what was great about this place at one time. And now we start venturing into some... <laughs> other areas and this is where he explains about the tags and crime scenes i was like oh okay that's what it meant because i had no clue what it meant <laughs> yeah so now we will see what else is going on what other crimes maybe are near but there's nothing i was waiting for jason to be there that's that's the thing about when you're just like you're just conditioned it, to it at this point. Yeah, you're yeah. conditioned the, to the music suspense. hits a certain way you see a certain angle you're like all right it, and then it doesn't happen you're like oh all right. yeah. and then it, and then it happens you're like ah, i knew it 
sniff. And was that supposed to be maybe Kevin Bacon's death scene bed? Maybe, would you think? I mean, I know, obviously, Possibly. it would still have been there, but I thought, hey, maybe that was an homage to that. Yeah, I, I could, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so then I kept trying to remember as I was watching, I was trying to look at everything to see, is this maybe supposed to be that? Is that supposed to be that? You know, I'm trying to catch all sorts of little hidden Easter eggs if they're there. Yeah, I wouldn't do this. I just banged your head on some pots. But, you know, but I like it. I, it. It's yeah. good tension building. It is It is good tension building. And like you said, if you would think that obviously this is just a ghost story and it's not real, I guess you would have fun and would it would just be so exciting to be going through this place that hasn't been touched in years just to find things, see stuff. But every time you see that damn thing, wondering what happened next, what is the other murder scene? <laughs> you know, but... Yeah, oh, definitely look, another new... a decapitated head. No, it was a mob. <laughs> right. And, th- and then this whole thing yeah. with the sounds. Yeah, builds up I'm again. hearing thuds upstairs like, oh, yeah, better go figure out what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's like it, it's. The more you hear the thud, though, I was thinking, OK, it's got to be a window or something or it's got to be a door. Or like a, I yeah, was thinking. Door. Yeah, I of course me going upstairs. I'm thinking it's gonna be just like a regular window, but then it's a, as you'll see in a bit, kind of a weird door <laughs> out to to nowhere. But I was I just was trying to memorize every time they chose something. I was just trying to see if it was a connection to any other movie. You, you would, know, there was probably you, you would. Yeah, know. How how does uh, how does this connect to uh, part four? Right. No, I, and I did. It, 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 you know, uh, I mean, it, it is fun to, it, you know, if, if, when movies do throw little uh, Easter eggs out there, it's always I, nice. Uh, that's why Ready Player One was enjoyable enough for me. It's just a lot of a lot of shit that you're like, oh, there's that, there's that, there's that. But the yeah, movie He-Man itself was. Yeah. yeah he man and Spawn, they're by each other. There. So yeah. this is that weird door out to. Out to as nothing. He described. Hey, exactly. A door out to nothing. I was like, all right, well, remember in part three, you know, yeah, how we had, that, you know I kind of got part door. three. Yeah, I got part three vibes from this. Yeah, yeah, because those were more big, boom, open up ones where they'd be pulling up stuff, like you said, hay and things as he kind of explained stuff. But I see, again, me not being out in the country, not knowing this stuff, I was like, did they really just have single door stuff like this? I mean, I guess they well, did. Well, as he just about. said, it's it, it makes it easier to, like, you can lift and, and put, like, shit onto the second floor from the outside. And it's just easier. To <laughs> Could do. you imagine not knowing? Could you imagine being a moron like me being in a place like this? And I see oh, that I would door love and to open see it, you in a scenario through. like this. You know, I don't <laughs> understand this country bumpkin shit. <laughs> I would have walked right out the door and right, bam, would have broke my neck. I mean, I would have had no clue. I go right through doors quickly. I don't take any time. So yeah, that would have been the end of Joe. Jason wouldn't have got me. It would have been the damn door. <laughs> that actually would have been a funny way. Uh, <laughs> Like if there were multiple people in this movie, that would have been a funny way for you to go. Exactly. Especially you see Jason waiting in the background, like ready to get me. And then he sees that and Jason's like, Damn. Then, you know, like he's. And then he just shrugs and then like Tyler gets pissed and throws his popcorn at the screen. He's like, what is this <laughs> knee slapping shit? I don't get this out of my Friday the 13th. Exactly. Movie. Exactly. I wouldn't be, able, I wouldn't have the privilege of being able to get killed by Jason. I would have got killed myself because I'm a moron. But now, yep, we're, we're into more of the stuff. Yeah. The doc, I, I, yeah, I like yeah. when it gets this because seeing the photos and and when I seen this little poem thing, it almost reminded me of this uh, ceramic one I had that looked very similar until he picked it up and I didn't realize it was, you know, a postcard basically. I thought it was, and that's to uh, my special boy from from mother. So, a birthday prayer for Jason. Don't you touch Jason's birthday prayer because it's going to get your ass. You'd be messing around with this shit like that. Oh, yeah. That's what we were waiting for the whole time. Like, okay, let's see when we get going. But, it's yeah, almost where we're, we're about exactly halfway into this fan film. So it's like it is perfect timing. They did. Yep. 20 minutes of, like I said, the anticipation, which <laughs> did work. And then this funky what, smell. What was like, that smell? And here we go. And got your ass. I liked it. Hey, you wondering what this door is for? Here, I'll show you what this door is for. And then boom, 
throw his ass out. <laughs> there you go. That's that's what the door is for. Those with the for with, with the GoPro, like we, we get to see and and hear and feel it. Yeah, and I even like this effect that they did with the GoPro of looking like it's kind of damaged and stuff. Yeah, you know, I like it. Like I said, everything they did. And they still, the teasing of Jason, that's always like, I always like the teasing and then that moment where you finally have the, the reveal of him to finally see him. That's what the movies were always about. It's like, going go to go with the axe. That's right. Ooh. Oh, almost yeah. got him. That was almost your dick. There, there we go. And you know what? I like this. There's been some shitty stuff again in fan films and other places where people either use the same mask over and over or that cheap white one. Yeah. This is something unique. It almost looks like they took part eight and maybe did some, you know, like uh, uh, liberties with it of changing stuff up. Of course, I don't know what mask they did. It could have been completely from scratch, but it feels like I got an eight vibe. And also when you see him, yes, you're looking like you feel like the, the Ken Kurtzinger from Freddy vs. Jason look. But I got... Yep, almost got you. But you also get vibes from the you know the two thousand nine remake. Like yeah. I said, it just it's a it's a, a good combination of, of all the looks. Yeah, and I love the quick moving again. For people say Jason didn't move quick. Like I said, go back watch two, three, four, and watch some of the other later ones. Jason did move fast at times, so I like this mix. I also like that. Of course, I like that little slow motion thing here too. It's almost like just you know, like I I just got a weird vibe out of it, but. Jason, when you don't expect him to get you, his ass can be quiet. But I like that they focused on when he would move quick, almost like in Freddy versus Jason, which some people didn't flip over. I like the big boom, boom, boom. Like it makes him feel like a juggernaut is coming to just rip your ass yeah. in half. That's what I like. <laughs> ass ripping Jason. I, no, really. I mean, I get into this. And believe me, I'm critical of stuff. I'm not somebody that, like I said, when it comes to Halloweens, I didn't like all of those. Friday the 13th, did they have some that were better than others? Yes, but I still loved them all. But and you think it's me? Oh, go ahead. No, it's just, uh, this is when, like, running from a killer and tripping makes sense. Because he went over that trespassing sign. He wasn't paying attention. He didn't just trip exactly. on He didn't trip on, like, a pebble or something. Right, it's just he... He really, yeah, tripped over something. But this, yes, I, I'm critical of movies, but I loved it. But I also like this weird effect they're showing when they're showing him. It's like a combination of feeling his dizziness, fear, and everything, and pain all combined. You know, like right there? Yeah. Where it does that weird kind of... I like it. Like I so said, the effects in this were really good. They just... They used them wisely with just spreading everything out. But, yeah, you're like, ah, damn, you know, you're you're feeling for this guy. It's like, Jesus, Jesus could be right on your ass probably in a second. Because he sliced his leg up bad over that damn no trespassing he wasn't paying attention to. It's just a, a good cat and mouse going from, from here towards the end. It is. Man, I you know what's... I want to fucking figure this guy. I almost want to contact people to do this. Like, you want me to make you a custom action figure? I'll do it just for you, but I'd love to see an official one. I, you can tell I like Jason right back me. I'd love a figure <laughs> of this version. Of course, I kept wondering the whole time, will we see his face? Will we see his face? Because it's something you usually got to see in every Friday the 13th movie. Boom, got your ass. That kind of caught me off guard because I thought Jason was yeah. going to walk around the other side, so I didn't expect it like that. And he did, and you know, and they make you again get antsy because you're thinking the whole time, like, "Oh, is he going to stab Jason with that?" But you know, he's just using the knife to help him get forward and get away. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, it's um, it, like in this that scene that you're just like, "All right, well, what's what's going to happen?" And now it's like, "All right, where where are we going to go moving forward? How is this going to end?" Yeah, and I love it. They got that classic kind of moon scene. Remember when we got those in like part one and two when they used to do that focusing on the moon and kind of the trees and shit? I like those little bit of uh, homages to the other movies. But also right here, yeah, he's, you know, he's hurt bad. He's hiding. And I mean, you said he pulls out his GoPro or whatever. He might think that uh, this is it. This is the end. It's like a lot of people when they leave or write a note if they think they're done. Wants to leave a message just in case this is it for him. Because he doesn't have his goddamn supplies. He left those back over there at the camp. And that's the stuff that could, of course, help him with his jacked up leg. But again, I, I like this little waving and wobbling effect of the recording yeah. and everything. I wish they'd make a sequel of this. I really do. Well, <laughs> give, give, give them time. They, they, they may. 
Yeah. And again, these are people. If if anybody, you, Hollywood wants somebody to write a movie and do something, get the people that were involved with Never Hike Alone. Let them be involved. And of course, then take advantage of your big budgets and all your money and your your extra, extra effects. But you can tell, don't even need a lot. I mean, that with what yeah. they did, I don't know how much they got for doing this. They did an amazing job of any of the special effects and just the, like you said, the production value from the music to the sound effects, everything. It just, it works. These are the people that should be involved in movies. So, so. just putting so, that out there, Nathan, the, the, the budget for never hike alone, $18,934. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It, and it feels like I said, I just, it feels so professional. I, I can't get over that. Like, so this is a movie that I could watch. Like, let's say it would just be on TV. I would sit and watch just like I'd watch any Friday the 13th movie because it feels that good. It feels like you're watching an actual movie that just could have been in theaters or on TV. It doesn't feel cheap. Like, you know, when you're watching something cheap and you're like, God, I wouldn't watch that on TV if you fucking paid me. You know, you just, some things <laughs> yeah. just don't work. Yeah. But he, he gave a goodbye message to, uh, to his, his parents. His parents. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, it was crying. Like I said, none of that felt fake. You know, it didn't feel cheesy. It didn't feel corny. Like I said, he did a good acting job. And now he's getting his ass back to the camp so he can get yeah, his so he can get, and it, get his stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, well, he's going to get his leg fixed up. But, you know, we got a, a round two coming here. You know, we had round one. We got we got to have round two coming. And up oh, there's, there's another <laughs> yeah. another crime scene. It's like there, these some bitches are everywhere. Like with Jason, my God, this is probably the entire camp should be covered in all sorts of colors everywhere you go. It's like, God, how many damn people did he kill? But Jason's got to get his shit. He's got to do his uh, kind of Rambo stuff, and he's going to eventually have to fix himself up. Right there. In the oh, house. yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like, I can't have. He's like, can I have three fucking seconds just to, <laughs> to heal my leg up or something? And that, you know, and I always love, of course, I always say I love seeing Jason more at night because it just feels creepier. It seems more intimidating, you know. Uh, I always love seeing him at night. And he's gone, just like that. But boom, boom, boom. I like that pissed off. That's for us, I think. That's that's an effect for us. Like we can feel the emotion and anger for Jason. That big those big stomps. I get into it. And then when he's when he's quiet, he wants to sneak up on your ass. Like I said, you don't need to hear it. So I get what they're trying to do. Yeah. In case people say, why, why wouldn't they hear him calling all the time? Because he stomps so loud. It's like you know we understand what they're trying to get across. It's when you start looking at it and breaking it down too much. And then yeah, then it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, then you can't enjoy it. Yeah, it's escapism. This is our way of escaping. You can't, you know, like you said, just pick apart every single thing just to be an ass. We get what they're trying to do. It's like if you're going to the movies to do that, then just don't go to the movies. There he goes. Ah, he got he got the kryptonite out of him. Yeah. <laughs> How are you with uh, like needles and shit in movies when they start to fix themselves? Are you squeamish to that sort of no. thing? It, it never bothers no. me at all. No, not in movies. In real life, though, it's like uh, I don't like seeing my friends or family, you know, getting things done to them like that i'd probably pass out i remember having a little blood after i had a hernia surgery and i was in the shower washing a drop of blood nathan i mean a drop came out of my incision which they said is normal almost fucking fainted in the shower that's <laughs> just uh, like that yeah when i when i cut my shin open at work and had to go to the hospital and get stitches they were like now you blah 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 I'm like, oh it's cool whatever and then they they were, did it and i just sat there and watched them the whole time ah uh, yeah, there he got his little hiker's guide or that thing that told us the stuff and he put that in his pocket he had to get that but yeah i uh no i i can like i said now if i get cut and i see my own blood it's okay but when it's out of a, an incision where i think oh god this is where they repaired me or fixed me and if i'm seeing <laughs> blood i think there's i think in my head there's something wrong even though they say it's normal oh shit can't go that way no i'm dying yep. yeah uh, here we go the classic i always love these scenes of when you peek and you see you know yeah. The character, and then he could kind of look at you. It always makes me think of part three. I hated that part when Chris was in that closet. She looked to see Jason. She made a sound, and then Jason seen her and started running real quick at her. Oh, I remember I lost my shit. I, I was freaked out. How about <laughs> want to piss your pants in part three? Oh, God, I hated that part. Oh, boy, now he's coming now. He is pissed. He knows somebody's here. He knows he's there somewhere. I'm going to get a little vibes from maybe uh, the 2009 remake of when he was just throwing shit. Remember yeah. like how when he was throwing those big uh, boats or sailboats or mm -hmm. not sailboats, those, you know what I'm fucking saying. Uh, canoes. 
Canoes, thank you. See, I mean, sailboats. Fucking boat is. Sailboats. <laughs> God damn, Jesus, those sailboats. This motherfucker's stronger than hell. <laughs> Three men. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I like this. Well, we got we to gotta take Joe camping. That's what we got to do. Yeah, exactly. And I always like this shit. I always love the seeing and then not seeing. Let then we know it's going to happen. Shit, you know what I would actually like to do? Dress, dress up, dress up as Jason, and go to a go to a campsite. That'd be hilarious. Yep. I'd probably get shot though. Probably. I like that. I like that peekaboo scene and throwing them around. Yeah. I always like seeing when we're gonna see some shit going down. This guy, like I said, he's trying to hang in there with Jason, and Jason gives us a couple moves we haven't seen before. But I like that too. It's like that shit didn't do nothing. He's like, and he had to look like, oh fuck. Here we go, yeah. the choke slam. Choke slam. <laughs> I liked it. I was like, damn. And I wonder if he took that stun you know, himself. I couldn't tell if that was a body double, but I think he did that stun himself. So, uh, yeah, Well, <laughs> with the $18,000 budget, uh, they may have not. We'll have to look in the credits and see if they I yep. imagine there were stunt coordinators. Yep. There were, had to oh. have been. Yep. He's gone. He's gone. Like, no, there he is. Hey, he took a good-ass choke slam. Though. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it was a good bump. It was. It was. And like I said, it was a new move in Jason's repertoire. Oh shit, he's ready. Yeah, I like that a lot too. Now. He just comes stumbling through the, the doors. Yep. Yep. Oh, here we go. I got my fucking tool that I was gonna make fun yeah, of. Yeah, that, that, that shitty that shitty shovel. <laughs> yep. There we go. I love I love seeing some action, some shit going No, it's down. it and this is also refreshing. It's nice to see someone go a little more toe to toe with Jason and not just immediately yeah. get killed, you know? Mm-hmm. Like we've seen it before in other movies, where you know they fight him, but you know yeah. a minute and a half, it. it's over. Right. Oh well, there it went. What the hell now? Oh, Here we go. ooh, got a good slash on him. Boom! The good old rock. Oh, oh, oh! We know what happens when that. Oh, here we go. We're gonna see it. And I love the tease. I yeah. love the little bit, but not all. It's just enough to make you think, oh, fuck. Again, another new look of him. And he's fucking gone. After seeing that, I know I'd be too. But you got to have a little peek of Jason in all the Friday 13th. It's like Joe, his mask ass accidentally got knocked off and he felt ashamed for a second. And then he had to go find his mask and put it back on. <laughs> oh, it would. Oh, I'd hate that if this thing came on on live. I would actually lose it. I'd probably not even want to come back on if that actually happened. I'd you probably would never want to do a show ever again after that. I wouldn't. It's, it's like it. The mystique's gone. If my mask ever came off during a show, oh, I, I'd, I'd fucking lose my mind because everybody would screen cap that and they'd put it on everywhere. It's like it's over. No more Ma Joe Lock. It's done. <laughs> Well, he got the ask uh, or the axe from earlier. That was the one that he, he got whipped at him and he avoided. He got the ask. No, he got the axe. He's got the big axe. Oh, shit. And look, and here we go in his in his little uh his fixer upper little bag. There now yeah. he's taking care of his arms. Like, God damn, this guy's he's pretty damn handy, you know. And I, I that, think that, that, that was I feel like that was the best approach to go with this, to have a guy who can go out into the woods and survive days on end on his own with, with certain yeah. supplies and know what right. he's doing. Yeah. Especially and when with, there's only one person. It yeah. makes him last, you know. Here we go. I like this moment because at first I was like, Oh, what yeah, happened? Yeah, you don't know what happened. And bam, he got the machete right in the gut, right in the abdomen. And then he got Jason yeah. too. I like. I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. Like he bleh, was all coming out of his mouth, spitting it up, and boom. That was kind of a cool yeah, thing. No, I yeah, it's it, it, it's an awesome visual. Yep, the hero and the villain going down at the same time. They both hit each other at the same time. They went down at the same time. Who's gonna get up? And what the hell's gonna go on? But I was like, man, this guy is taking some shit, man. His leg, his wrist, he got stabbed in the abdomen. But this little nod to, hey, that book he grabbed earlier kind of took a little bit of the blunt of the blow. It still got him, but yeah. if he didn't have that there, that would have went right through his stomach and through his back. So his, his, his <laughs> little book actually saved him. <laughs> I threw that shit to the side now. Let's see how bad the, the wound is. Yeah, I was I, I was waiting for him to MacGyver himself up again. I was like, okay, now he's gonna get stitching and do this shit. He's got yeah, he's got here. a staple gun in his bag. 
<laughs> no, but it's 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 like you said, it's a handy survival bag because yes, you yeah. would have that stuff in case you're getting scrapes and shit along the way when you're hiking. Yeah, you're gonna have stuff that you're gonna pour on it, wrap up. You would have things to sew and stitch. So, and I like that this one. Yeah, when he got in the gut, it's like yeah, he 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 fixed up what he could, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me get the hell out of here. I can't take no more, do no more with this big fucker in back of me. And oh boy, yeah, he stops. He's like, oh shit, am I hearing something? Could you imagine the look? You think you got this guy? You just axed him right in the throat. It's like, oh god, and he's still coming. Yeah, it's like yeah, like I'm done. The nasty, goopy blood of Jason. Ugh, it's a hot, hot mess of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. gross looking. Yeah, fuck this. Fuck this. I love it. Fuck this. It's like he's gone. It's, I would be too. It's like, okay, that's just too much. I'm getting the hell out of here after this guy's survived all that madness. And that's an awesome shot. The I love that. The moon in the, the eye. moon in the eye. Yeah. Beautiful. And it gave you a vibe again of kind of part one and two. Remember when you'd see, you know, like, you know, uh, Pamela when she was walking and she would hear the voices and they'd show the moon and her. And then Jason in part two when he's running the moon and everything and it'd do that dual look. I liked it. And this here, it's like, oh, shit. Well, finally, he's maybe going to go wash himself up. There he goes. Getting some of that water. Trying to at least wake himself up from this madness. <laughs> Looking around, he's paranoid as hell. I would be, too. And then what does he see? Uh, there's a marker signifying where somebody else died. A crime scene. Like, wait, how did that get there? And boom! I like it. The old jump scare. You gotta have a jump scare on a Friday the 13th. I'm like, oh, shit. It's like, well, that guy just went through all that for nothing. He went all the way to the end. And he's getting himself crushed. He's <laughs> squeezing his head. There goes the arms. Mm, there goes yeah, the blood. The blood. Out. You gotta have lots of blood. Oh. And bleh, done. It's like, wow. Well, I was like, what a way to end the movie. But it's not over. I was like, oh, good. Because yeah, I actually thought that was it. I yeah, thought, me too. the poor guy got killed. Yeah. yeah. I was like, a jump scare moment. Cool. You feel a little safe when you always see the EMTs. Hello? Oh, there's that fucking Axel. Just like in part four, but this is a different Axel. You remember Axel in part yeah. four? Remember? Yeah. In the, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's how it's described. Like a beard on that vagina. That sounds like that sounds like a Joe Amato <laughs> quote right there, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, she's just... Yeah, gotta check the eyes. I have to mute my mic here in a second. Emily's oh, going to return. Exactly. The dogs will go crazy. And it's like, oh, my yep. God. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'd be freaking out, too. And you do that. You know, if you were under that kind of distress and stuff and something going on, I, I think you probably would be freaking out. So he's thinking he's seeing Jason. Jason ain't there, but he sure the hell thinks he's seeing Jason. So, yeah. The trauma. <laughs> it, it's real. It, it, it's real. Gotta calm him down. And, and yeah, I like this too. I, I it, would, it would this part would honestly probably fuck me up in a theater because I don't like strobe light effects mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, and then the, the sound they were making the and everything. Yeah, yeah. And at this point, you're just kind of like, well, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Is he still dreaming? Like what? Uh... I figured he was doped up. Now that is when I assumed he was doped up or something and just going nuts because I was like that just flashed too quickly. Yeah. But then boom, then you see that. So yeah, trying to get some stuff in him, calm his ass down. He's trying to let them know somebody's out there. They don't know what's going on. But thinking he's crazy. But of course, if you've seen a guy that's just been slashed up the hill or all these wounds, you figure, okay, something had to get him. I'm sure he didn't just fall down a mountain and that's where he got all the wounds. Some you can tell, but others you can tell he probably got some, oh shit. And then you heard this. Hey. There's good old Tommy. Tommy. Tommy Jarvis. I was like, now that was a pretty cool cameo yeah. to sit there and get Tom Matthews to be in it. I was like, that must have been fun for them to actually say, would you like to be in our movie? And for him to accept, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, man. This is a mess. <laughs> Time to clean him up. Like, you should have did that immediately, right? When you got him in, you should have been antiseptic him and all that and stitching him up. Just... Poor guy, sitting there dying on the table. Oh, yeah, I did like that. I did like seeing Tommy from, from part six. That's why they got to do another. 
I can do another one of these pan films. See, and I didn't know, like, you know, when I seen him, I was like, okay, is this, I know we seen Tommy Jarvis on his, you know, jacket there, but I was like, okay, are we supposed to be taking him as Tommy as we remember Tommy? So does he know about the legend of Jason or is this just a quick little cameo? You know, yeah. that's what I was at first wondering. You get a little more feel of it in just a bit, but I was like, uh, yeah, I didn't know what was going on at first, but that, yeah, that was the big kind of boom of the movie was to see him. I was like, all right, got one of the actors that was in one of the Friday the 13th movies in your movie. Yeah, he knows something's going on. <laughs> oh, oh, there go the dogs. That's what you heard for one second, people. Uh, Nathan's dog is just one little nuts because the lady's home, the lady of the house. Yep, got a call in. Yep, he's calling into the station, making the reports. I was like, they better not get him. That's all I kept thinking, Nathan, right there. I was like, oh, come on. I don't have Jason kill Tommy here. I didn't know what was happening. But they build it. Build it. And then you can see his genuine reaction. It's like, oh, okay, so he does know this is Tommy as we know Tommy from right here with this reaction coming. Yeah. 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 So he knew it. So I was like, okay, good. It made an acknowledgement. But yeah, now, oh, shit, what's going on? Tommy got pulled out. I was like, oh, shoot, there went Tommy. Go send Axel out there. He's done looking at his porn and everything. He doesn't know how to stitch something up right anyway. Send his ass out there. Hey, man, what are go, you doing? You know, that would probably be a lot of people. I could picture me being somewhere like that, hearing stuff. And if I'm hearing all this, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'd probably be looking like that, too. Like, I probably don't want to go out there. Because sounds like somebody's getting butchered. And, oh, shit. Uh, there went Axel. No more Playboys for him. Yep. Yep, I'd be running my ass back, too. Yep, and bam, got your ass. And there she goes. Another one bites the dust. Oh, shoot, so it just left. He's the only one left. <laughs> just I'm imagine, like, door. coming to again, and you're just like. <laughs> and there he is. It's like, wouldn't that just, that's like, it's enough. It's like, now you don't know, like, is it another dream again? Is this happening yeah. this time? You're not quite sure. And the good old axe. And this time uh, the axe it's, for Axel. Yeah. Well well for uh well it was on it. Yeah. Yep. Hey Mega, <laughs> remember me, asshole? I like that. So he used his line from we did part six and just drive away. Well, I, I hope he is securely locked in the in the back of that ambulance and he just doesn't I go thought the same thing out. too. I was thinking the same thing about but I, I, I want to say they do in. have like locking mechanics for the, the wheels. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking, because we've seen the old gag in old movies before they fall out. But that's it. That was uh, – and, boy, we had uh, your favorite blockhead, and we had Who That Whale that was there. We didn't know you guys were here because we were doing this commentary. But And, dude, so that, that sunset like there, I, I, I see sunsets like that all the time. That's that's what it's like around here, all the, the mountains and everything around. Wait, wait, I can't see that. I couldn't look anywhere and see a sunset where I'm at. But, no, that uh, – never hike alone. A fantastic, fan fantastic movie fan that. film. Yes, and and again, if you guys, this was your first time, and you heard our commentary with seeing that, and you'd want to see it again. Make sure you watch it, and yeah, share this around for everybody to see, because this is definitely something that's worth watching. If you've never seen this damn movie, it's great, and and go to their uh, Facebook page. Like I said, it's Never Hike Alone on Facebook, and they usually give updates on stuff. And I believe they said sometime this month they would start taking possibly some maybe kind of uh, give you information of how you can acquire a Blu-ray uh, version of this as well. I don't know if it had extra scenes or anything like that, but at least I know that they'll tell you how it can be available. So I don't, I don't know if it'll go into any other projects. I know there's there's some other Friday the 13th fan films. I can't remember off the top of the head what the one was, but I know uh, Deborah Voorhees, who was in Part 5, I think she's somehow involved in some, maybe some other people that worked on uh, some of the movies, but I think they're trying to do some other kind of Friday the Thirteenth fan. Uh -huh. There, there was uh, stunt coordinators, and yes, he did have a, a double. So, uh, oh, Don, Donnie Nichols probably took that choke slam. Oh, he probably took the choke slam. Okay. Yeah, but, but uh, a decent, uh, decent little crew here in the the credits and uh, the music. We had uh, five different people. We had the composer. We had violin and a uh, cello and percussion. And uh, oh. yeah. And then, of course, we get special thanks. I imagine, yeah, these are all the guys that uh, were the Kickstarter backers, which I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known about this as well. 
Me too. Like I said, I just found out about it through a Friday the 13th group, and they were talking about this going live on YouTube on that one particular day. And I, I felt like it was a, a – I thought it was a Friday the 13th of last year, maybe, because I remember I watched it, and I remember sharing it on my Facebook page the day it went live, and I watched it as it came on. I just can't remember um, what day that was, but it, it was sometime last year. So it, it was a while ago, though. I just go through my old posts because I thought I made like a uh, – I thought I even like took one of the screen caps and said something just to have people click on it and, and watch it. And I thought I got some, res- you know, some responses. So, yeah. you know, cause some people are probably leery like me, you know, first you hear fan film, you're like, mm, I don't know, but trust me, you're not getting that feeling from this. You watch it. You feel like you watch something at the theater. So it's, it's that good. And hopefully they will do a sequel someday, especially if what they did with 18,000. Could you imagine the, you know, the hype oh, yeah. that's been generated from the movie? Maybe they could get even more and could get more production value out of it. And you could have something even more intense and maybe it could even be an hour and a half, you know? Yeah. I, I remember there being talk of when they were going to do another Friday the 13th, that it would potentially be a found footage film. And, you know, we kind of got, we kind of, well, I'm just saying with this, we kind of got the best of all of those elements. You did. But yeah, I remember when they talked about found footage for the one, I was like, Oh, sweet Jesus. Yeah. Cause all I'm picturing is purely found footage and it would have been a hot mess, but no, you're right. This, they did just a good combination and you got more of the, uh, of a, movie type than found footage but what they did it worked that's the perfect way to mix so in case they ever thought of something like that of how to do it you should take never hike alone as an example of how to do something properly you know yeah i i what's to say that we haven't said uh amazing effort hope we get more from these guys and this crew and uh we hope you guys enjoyed it if it was your first time viewing it and if it was your uh second or third or 57th time watching it we hope that you enjoyed watching it with uh joe and i talking over it yeah it was fun that's why i'm gonna double check i want to go to facebook just to make sure for never hike alone and check their their page so just so i can give people ideas i just want to make sure it was nothing different to type oh you know it's simple as that if you type never hike alone there's the page called never hike alone like it and then when you scroll down they start giving information and that's when they talked about the yeah, the DVD or the Blu-ray. I'm sorry, because they said, I guess that's the way they can do it to where it's can be played on any region. They describe it as it said, yeah, region uh, free. This was, yeah, they posted on February 22nd. It said, Happy Friday. It said, after getting thousands of emails requesting copies of Never Hike Alone, here's a sneak peek at the design for a second edition Blu-ray. We are planning to launch for pre-order in March. Date pending. It said, we'll be returning to Indie uh, Go. Indiegogo and productions will only take a few weeks since the contents for the disc have already been built. Just to clarify, this will be Blu-ray only since it is the only format that can be played worldwide. Huh. And they said, stay tuned for more. All right. And well, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, when, when that goes up, I will get a copy of that. Me too. I, I, I will, uh, Joe, actually, I'll scrape some pennies together and I'm actually going to get it this time. <laughs> You know how he's, I have issues of buying stuff, but he's I'll, gonna, I'll he's get, guys, he's going to go trade in those pages of the playboy that he found. He's going to hit up the old coupon King and he's going to be like, what can I get out of this? And he's like, I'll you know that. what, you know what? This is actually a, a rare centerfold in a playboy that not many were released. So I can give you at least uh, $32. See, get that. And then I could probably pay for this. That's a perfect way to do it. Remember Joe, he's got to find ways of getting extra money. I just don't have it laying around. <laughs> but that was go. good I'm, Nathan, I'm, so. gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and like that page now yeah. that way i can get the updates when that goes live okay and delvis even said thanks for sharing guys i'll check the movie out before fans of power tonight it's well worth it delvis and favorite blockhead make sure you watch too he said he just dropped episode 82 of his podcast he said it's a weird combination of peanuts and mma so uh, there you go. Uh, I was, yeah, I'm just trying to give the shout outs of everything that I've seen because I know we missed a whole ton of stuff probably. But yeah, and don't forget to join us for Fans of Power tonight. We'll be discussing a mini comic of Nathan's choosing. And then we're going to have commentary that Tyler and I will be doing for one of the episodes of she I'll leave that for later tonight so you guys can see which one that's going to be. But we're waiting on Nathan to see what mini comic he wants to discuss. You know, he's he's been him hauling around and not giving us an answer, but whatever. Uh, okay. <laughs> You'll have one before we we do the show. Don't don't oh, you worry. Okay. It, it's it's yeah. gonna be fine. Ah, okay, good. All right. Well, <laughs> do you have anything in closing you want to tell anybody about the liking, subscribing, and sharing, and ringing a bell, and all that good stuff? See, I said it, but you could say it better. So go ahead, Nathan. I don't I don't understand why he says that. It's like go ahead and just say the same things, <laughs> but you do it better. <laughs> but you, 
<laughs> no, no, you do it because you do it calmly and you say this and you doesn't, say that. Make any I talk. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. Anyway, good. Go. Uh, thanks to you guys that joined us live. If you're catching this on the archive, make sure you like the channel, hit subscribe. Ring the bell so you get notified when we go live for Capes and Commentaries Beyond Retro Podcast. And on the occasion when I pop in and do my my drunk game thing, check out all the links down below. You can download us on Podbean and iTunes. And I want to encourage those of you that listen to us in the audio formats, come on over to YouTube.com slash Beyond Retro Podcast. Check out Fans of Power. As Joe mentioned before, the podcast dedicated to He-Man and the Master of the Universe. You can find that at YouTube.com slash Fans of Power Podcast. Like us on Facebook. Like this video, leave a comment down below, and make sure to check out the fan film. If you if you didn't watch it along with us, at least watch it standalone and uh, see it for yourself. And, and uh, how can you say how can you say that wasn't better than what I just did? I told well, you I speak a hundred miles an hour. I told you you usually slow it down. Me, I'm just I take off and I'm I go. So yeah, I could say that, but I say it in five seconds where you'll say it in like, you know, a minute, but it's better. People want to hear that slow down. <laughs> Usually it's just, for me, you can't, you can't just sit there and audio and slow that down to hear. Yeah. Jones. You know what? I can start doing that since I've messed with the audio before I send it to Doug and he, he puts it on pop culture network website. I'd love to hear myself slow down. That would be interesting. <laughs> that would be a, would be something different. So check yes. out those t-shirts, right. hit them up for a custom. If you if you want a, a, a custom never hike alone Jason Voorhees, this is your man. I'm sure I'll he could it. get it done. He would do it. He'll do I'll it do for it free. Time. So uh, right. you guys, you guys uh, from the production company of Never Hike Alone, Joe Motto will 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 make you a, a Jason Voorhees for free. I will. Though. That's the only that's the only people I'd do it free for. Because you're right. I mean, that's how I make a living. But for them, I would make a free one just so they could say, "Damn it, here's a figure of that amazing Jason." You know that you did, which is unique, has its own style. Love the different mask. Not a cheap looking or corny mask. That's why I like. I like when you can see a a different version that feels like the others, but you can just still see the differences, like every single one of these. So, great job. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say until next time, have a powerful day, but I can't say that. That's what yeah, I say. That, night, that, so. that's, that's the wrong show. Until next time, we will see you in the future to talk about the past. Thanks again, everybody. Yeah.